January 11th, 1902, Volume 4. In order to be perfect, love must be triple. The Law of Divorce. This morning, having received Holy Communion, I saw my adorable Jesus for a little while. And as soon as I saw him, I said to him, My sweet good, tell me, do you continue to love me? And he, Yes, but I am loving and jealous, jealous and loving. Even more I tell you, that in order to be perfect, love must be triple, and in me there are these triple conditions of love. First, I love you as creator, as redeemer, and as lover. Second, I love you in my omnipotence, which I used in creating you, and in creating everything for love of you, in such a way that air, water, fire, and everything else tell you that I love you, and that I made them for love of you. I love you as my image, and I love you out of regard for you individually. Third, I love you ab eterno, meaning from eternity. I love you in time, and I love you for all eternity. And this is nothing but a breath that came out of my love. Imagine yourself what must be the love I contain within myself. Now you are obliged to return to me this triple love, loving me as your God in whom you must fix all of yourself and let nothing come out of you which is not love for me, loving me out of regard for yourself and for the good that comes to you, and loving me for all and in all. After this he transported me outside of myself, and I found myself in the midst of many people who were saying, If this law is confirmed, poor woman, everything will turn out bad for her. All were anxiously waiting to hear the pros and the cons. And in another separate place, many people could be seen who were discussing among themselves. One of them took the floor and reduced everyone to silence. Then, after much struggling, he went out the door and said, Yes, indeed, in favor of the woman. On hearing this, all those who were outside made feast and those who were inside remained all confused, so much so that they did not have the courage even to go out. I believe that this is the law of divorce which they are talking about, and I understood that they did not confirm it. January 11th, 1903, Volume 4 She Sees Monsignor Fighting for the Sake of Religion As the confessor had told me to pray according to the intention of Monsignor, finding myself outside of myself, I could see that it did not regard Monsignor, but other people. Among them I could see a very good lady, but all consternated and crying, and Monsignor beneath the arms of a cross with Christ crucified on it, defending it. He was going to have the occasion to fight for the sake of religion. And I saw blessed Jesus saying, I will confuse them. January 11th, 1912, Volume 10, Love Wants to be Matched by Love. After I received communion, my always lovable Jesus made himself seen all around me, and I was in the middle, as if within a flow. Jesus was the flow, and I the nothing which was in the middle of this flow. Now who can say what I experienced in this flow? I felt I was immense, yet nothing existed of me but nothingness. I felt breathed upon by Jesus. I felt his breath around me and everywhere. But I don't have the words to express myself. I am too ignorant. I wrote this to obey. Then afterwards Jesus told me, My daughter, see how much I love you and how I keep you safe within my flow, that is, within me. This is how you should keep me safe and sheltered within you. 
love wants to be matched by love, so as to have the contentment of making a greater surprise of love. Therefore never go out from within my love, from within my desires, from within my works, from within my all. January 11th, 1922, Volume 13. The souls who live in the divine will will be for the body of the church like skin to the body and will bring to all of its members the circulation of life. Finding myself in my usual state, I was thinking about the holy divine will, and I said to myself, all the children of the church are members of the mystical body of which Jesus is the head. What place will the souls who do the will of God occupy in this mystical body? And Jesus, always benign, on coming, told me, My daughter, the church is my mystical body, of which I glory in being the head. But in order to enter this mystical body, the members must grow to a proper stature, otherwise they would deform my body. But alas, how many not only do not have the due proportion, but are rotten, wounded, so much as to be disgusting to my head and to the other healthy members. Now the souls who live or will live in my will will be for the body of my church like skin to the body. The body has internal skin and external skin, and because in the skin there is the blood circulation which gives life to the whole body. It is by virtue of this circulation that the members reach the proper stature. If it wasn't for the skin and for the blood circulation, the human body would be horrible to the sight, and its members would not grow to the due proportion. Now, see how these souls who live in my will are necessary to me. Since I have destined them to be like skin to the body of my church, and like circulation of life for all the members, they will be the ones who will give the proper growth to the members which have not grown, who will heal the wounded members, and who will restore the freshness, the beauty, the splendor of the whole mystical body by their continuous living in my will, rendering it fully similar to my head which will sit in full majesty upon all those members. This is why the end of days cannot come if I do not have these souls who live as though dissolved in my will. They interest me more than anything. What impression would this mystical body make in the celestial Jerusalem without them? And if this is what interests me more than anything, it must interest you also more than anything if you love me. From now on I will give to your acts done in my will the virtue of circulation of life for the whole mystical body of the church. Just like the blood circulation in the human body, your acts, extended within the immensity of my will, will extend over all and will cover these members like skin, giving them proper growth. Therefore be attentive and faithful. Then afterwards I was praying, all abandoned in the will of Jesus, and almost without thinking I said, My love, everything in your will, my little pains, my prayers, my heartbeat, my breathing, all I am and all I can, united to all that you are, so as to give proper growth to the members of the mystical body. In hearing me, Jesus made himself seen again, and, smiling with satisfaction, added, How beautiful it is to see my truths in your heart as font of life immediately having the development and the effect for which they have communicated themselves. Therefore correspond with me, and as soon as I see one truth developed, I will make it an honor for myself to make another font of truth arise. End of January 11th Fiat